a lot of you may have watched my videos where I'm showing you how to do something in DaVinci Resolve and there's circles and arrows and all sorts of things happening on screen while you're watching the video. A lot of people will ask me, Daniel, how do I get my own circles and arrows? Well, let me show you. All you need to do is open up a new project like I have here. And from the edit page, go to the upper left media pool, right click in this gray area here and choose new fusion composition. Now it's gonna have a little pop-up screen that's gonna ask you some very simple things like the frame rate, the name of it. To get started today, I'm just gonna keep it really simple and just name this clip. Now let's say we're gonna make a circle. I may call it animated circle. And then I hit create. There's now a fusion composition up there. It's completely blank. It's just a working open slate that I can build something from. So let's left click and hold and drag that down into our timeline. And with that selected, let's switch over to the fusion page. Now I know sometimes the fusion page can be really scary, but we're gonna make this nice and easy today, I promise you. Now we've got the media out one node here, which is basically the node that takes anything we build in fusion and sends it right back out to the timeline on the edit page. So what we wanna do is we actually wanna add in something to start with, like a canvas to start drawing on. So what we're gonna choose is this background node right here. Left click, hold and drag that down into your timeline. And you'll see this little square dot on the right side of it. Let's left click, hold and drag over and connect it to the media out. Now it's showing me a black screen. You might have two preview windows. I have one if you're seeing a different preview layout than I am. Remember you can change most of the layout and the look of your page. In this case, if I wanted to have a split screen, I could change the viewer to a split screen mode. For today, I only need one, so I'm gonna leave one enabled. And as always, you've got icons in the upper right and in the upper left that are gonna control some of the things you see. So if there's any reason you don't see things like your node pool, you may have nodes turned off. Or if you don't see your media pool, it's probably because you have media pool turned off. So we have this background node connected to the output. Pretty simple, black canvas output. Now we wanna draw something on this and we we're gonna make a circle today, a nice animated circle. So we can use that again in other projects that we might make next week or the week after. So with that background node selected, let's left click on that, make sure that it's highlighted in red. We're gonna go up to the paint node right here, the one with the little paintbrush, and just click on that. And because we had background selected, it's gonna add it in line right after the background node. Now, nothing has changed so far because we haven't done anything with this paint node, but with the paint node selected, see how it's surrounded in that reddish orange again? Let's go to the upper left, just above our preview window, and let's change the brush stroke over to stroke. Now with that paint node still selected, let's go to the upper right, make sure we have the inspector turned on. Remember, if we don't see an inspector, click on that inspector tab, that'll make sure you can see it. And let's scroll down first and let's look at brush controls. Click on that little arrow and expand it and you can see this is gonna control the way that the brush stroke looks when we write on screen. And I'm gonna quickly just take my mouse and draw a line across the screen. And under the brush controls, you can see it has a preset size. I can increase the size and draw again. It'll be a larger, wider stroke. I can go from sort of that more blurred, slightly fuzzy brush stroke, which they call soft, I can make that more of a circular or a harder stroke so that there's no softness to it. There's all sorts of different options here that you can do, but today, why don't we just use the circular one? Let's set it for circular. And I can delete everything on screen just by stepping back the changes I just made. On PC, that would be Control plus the Z button on your keyboard. If you're using a Mac, I believe it's Command plus Z. So just hold down Control, hit Z, and it'll undo these previous steps and deselect everything that I just did. But I know that I want that stronger brush shape. I'm gonna to go to the solid shape. Let me double check the size. Does that look good? Sure, let me hit the control Z again and make sure I got rid of that stroke. So now I know the brush stroke that I want. You can change the color too if you don't want white. You could click here in the color section and you can click anywhere in this color spectrum, decide there's a color that you like and then hit okay if you liked green more than you liked white. I personally liked white, let's stick with white. Now down below that, you're gonna see an option for stroke controls. And if I expand that, we wanna change some of the preset default values to do something different than just drawing on screen. We actually wanna be able to animate that a bit. So where it says stroke animation, let's change that over to write on, because we're actually gonna be writing on the screen. And then below that, it says duration. This is all based in frames. Let's bring that up to 30 frames. Now make sure your playhead is set all the way back to the beginning. And then just bring your cursor up to your screen. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna left click, hold, and quickly draw a shape. 
Let's try drawing a circle. But what you'll see is all these keyframes were added into the timeline. And if I hit play or the space bar, you'll see that it'll show that circle being drawn on the way that I drew it. Now, maybe I don't love that circle. I don't think I nailed it this time. So I'm going to use control Z again and undo it. Make sure that my playhead is all the way back at the beginning. Now, let me see if I can do that motion a little bit better. Let's draw a circle. And if I play through, there's my circle being drawn. I kind of like that one. Let's stay here for a minute. Now that I have a circle drawn, I want to do a couple of modifications to it. Step one is I kind of drew it at an angle. I, I don't know if it's because I'm a righty or I'm just not talented at drawing straight across the screen, but I can modify this a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select that paint node and I'm going to go up here and add a transform node just by clicking on it and it'll drop it right after my paint node. Now I can go to the upper right here and I can change the angle of this. You can see I can straighten it out a little bit. Maybe I'll have it draw a little more of a circle that way. I can even change the size. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And you can adjust this however you want. Now you can see as I start to move this around, the black background is moving with it. And to be perfectly honest, we don't want a background. We want this to have a transparent background when we export it later. So let's take care of that right now. Here's the background node. Let's select that. Let's go to the upper right and see right here under the background section, it says alpha. Let's pull the alpha back just by left clicking, holding, dragging it backwards to the left. Now you'll see all of that background is completely transparent. And if I play from the beginning, you'll just see that circle drawn on screen. Kind of cool. But as much as I like this circle so far, I might want to put a bit of a drop shadow because what if I'm using this white circle over a color like white or a lighter color where it may not show up as much? So let's do this. Let's select the transform node. We've got background, we've got the paint node, we've got the transform that's changing the shape. Let's move this over to the right. I'm going to select the paint node. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit shift plus space bar on my keyboard and I'm going to search for drop shadow. Select drop shadow and click add. And now you'll see up in your preview window, it's added a bit of a drop shadow to that circle. And with that drop shadow node selected in the upper right, I can pull back the blur first. Now you can actually see the shadow. It's a little bit farther away than I personally would like. So I'm going to grab the distance and bring that closer by dragging it to the left. And then I'm going to open the blur back up because I want it to be a softer shadow. Maybe not something that's so obvious, something like this. And now when this draws its circle on screen, it draws a nice little circle. It's got a bit of a drop shadow to it. And if I go back to the edit page, I now have this cool animated circle fusion composition that I just created myself really quickly in fusion. Now that could have been an arrow. That could have been anything I wanted to draw. I just chose a circle and I could build many of these and I could make them much fancier. Now, if you look at it right now, it has a black background again. And that's only because I currently have the background set for black. I can change the viewer background from black to checkerboard. I could change the viewer background to gray. This is all just a matter of viewer preference. But making sure I export this properly is what's going to make sure it remains transparent when I use it later on. Now you can get super fancy with these. You don't have to do basic ones. I wanted to show you some basic ones to start with today so you can practice, but there are actually places online where you can find some of these cool animations that are pre-built and look awesome. And you can download them and just start using them right away. Places like today's sponsor, Storyblocks. Storyblocks is an affordable asset house where you can get things like B-roll, music, sound effects and images that you can use royalty free in your next YouTube video. And Storyblocks just added an entire section of templates specifically for DaVinci Resolve. These include animated titles, transitions, motion graphics, and more. Now I've been using Storyblocks for years before they ever became a sponsor on the channel, mostly because I really like the quality of the product and how well it helps me with my workflow. I also really like the fact that for one affordable price, you can get access to as many assets as you need there. And there are no download limits about how many high quality videos that you can use at any given time period or how many images or many pieces of music or sound effects or templates that you can download from Storyblocks. One price gets you access to as much as you need. I'll leave a link down below if you want to go check out Storyblocks for yourself today. Okay, so we're in the edit page and we have this thing built as a fusion composition. Now we need to get it exported out so we can use it again in other projects. What you want to do is go over to the deliver page and then up here, I like to use custom export. You can name this whatever you want. Let's call it animated circle. Let's decide where we want this to be exported to. And then under here, you have options for video and audio. Now I'm going to leave the audio unticked. There's no audio attached for this. I don't need an audio track attached to it. It's just going to be an animated circle. So I'll leave audio unticked and off. 
And under the video tab, let's make sure the export video box is ticked. And for the format, let's go down to QuickTime. And then for the codec, we want to use something that supports transparency. And for a lot of you who may have ever brought in images where you've removed the background, you probably know the difference between a JPEG image and a PNG image, where a JPEG doesn't support transparency and it'll always have a background, but you can export something with the background removed and save it as a PNG image, and it will support that transparency. It will always have that background removed when you bring it back into your project. Well, when we export video, it's the same thing. We wanna make sure that we're using a video format and codec type that will support transparency and keep that background removed. So with QuickTime selected, let's scroll down and choose DNXHR. And when we select that, you will see there is an option down here for export alpha. And that will make sure that the alpha channel transparency is supported. Now all we have to do is add to render queue and you'll see your project right there ready to be rendered and then choose render all. Now let's go back to the edit page and test it out. For right now, I'm gonna move this out of the way and let me grab a piece of B-roll footage that I got from Storyblocks. Now this is just a video of a pool and maybe I wanted to highlight something happening in this video, like maybe that flower. What I could do is I could right click, choose import media, find that animated circle that I built import it, and now I can drag that down into my timeline and I can put it right over my video. And if I wanna circle something in specific, all I need to do is with that circle footage selected, just go to the lower left of my preview window, turn on the transform option, and now I can change the size of it, I can move it wherever I want, maybe I want it just over that flower. And now when I play through, it's gonna draw a circle right around that flower in my footage. Try this with some of your own animations and let me know how they work out for you. And if you have questions about any of this, make sure to leave them in the comments below. And if you want to learn more about how to edit videos with DaVinci Resolve, click on the video that I have on screen now, or the ones that I'll link down below. Peace.